History runs into mystery here, said Pulitzer Prize winning novelist A.B. Guthrie. It's a surmise that Mongols crossed the Bering Sealand Bridge, marked their way south, and became or merged with our Indians of mountains and plains. Supposedly, there was an ice-free zone formed kind of a, of a corridor that they could pass through. Backcountry ranger and biologist Dave Shea and Chippewa Little Shell elder Al Wiseman walked one of the most documented parts of the trail. The Old North Trail is some of the oldest history known to mankind. The elder helped spearhead a community project to mark this section of the trail. He's heard its story since he was a child. Most all elders were the library for our youth. Through here, Al says, countless Indian ancestors would wind their way along the Rocky Mountain front. The first travel on this trail was foot and dog travels. Horse never come into this part of the country until 1730 to 1750. You can still imagine where it went, and you know why they were here, because you got firewood, you've got water, you got food for the horses. The granite with, boulder uh, Dave stands near is a symbol of prehistory. It was brought here from farmland east of Shoto. It shows people where the trail was. There are 23 such boulders on the trail side. This is number 13. They came from northern Manitoba, 500 miles away uh, on the last continental glacier. These rocks are called cairns. It's believed ancient travelers used them as guideposts. It's like our highway markers. It tells us where we're going. The trail runs north and south through Teton County. There's 43 cairns on each side of the trail for about uh, half a mile. That's just in one section. Under these cairns grows a traditional native plant. Kinnikinnik or Indian tobacco. Native plants and grasses flourish here. Dave says this biscuit root was especially favored by the Blackfeet. And they're actually dug up and pounded and uh, roasted into biscuits. From the subalpine fir high in the mountains to limber pine in the foothills, it's a transition zone. From the mountain vegetation to the plains vegetation. East of the old trail on the Rocky Mountain front, you see it, the prairie. Over many millions of years, it pushed these mountains from the west to the east and where the Old North Trail is, it's pretty easy traveling right along the base of the mountains because when you get farther out on the prairie, the water courses are bigger and they're harder to cross. Through thousands of years, the vegetation along the trail may have changed, but the men say the topography would be much the same. The hills and the river, they were here. It had to be because the scars of the trail is here. About a half mile to the south, we pick up the trail again. Remember granite boulder number 13? This would be number 14. Here, you really can see the trail. The Travois Trail, right where I'm standing here, I'll take you across it, and it ends right there. In 1915, Al's mother, a Chippewa Cree, was born in the canyon behind him. He says his family occasionally used the trail to travel short distances. 20, 30 miles maybe at the most. But even this part of the trail eventually passed into time. Automobiles started coming out, skunk wagons. Times change. Dave feeling gets a special feeling when he visits here. Spiritual and somewhat sacred. You can feel the vibes. At the Old Trail Museum is a Roman bronze coin found in a teepee ring near the trail. It dates back to Emperor Hadrian, 117 to 138 AD. What was it doing there? It's a mystery. It's here that we stop at the south fork of the Teton, but the trail continues around those foothills, over the mountains, and thousands of miles to Mexico. Kevin Mackey, NBC Montana.